whole world Give me Jesus Being close to Jesus is what everyone desires who experienced the presence and love of Jesus. Apostle John is the one who was pretty close to Jesus and he recorded so much about the love of Jesus like no other gospel writer. In chapter 15 of John's gospel we find the famous teaching of Jesus about the necessity of a close relationship with him, which Jesus illustrated by this brilliant example of the vine and the branch. To get a better picture of chapter 15, it is well for us to consider that John recorded in chapters 13 through 17 the last 24 hours of the life of Jesus. These particular 24 hours dedicated Jesus fully to his disciples. This is such an important period that John devoted almost one quarter of his gospel for these 24 hours which is also giving us a beautiful insight into the heart of Jesus. In chapter 13 and 14, Jesus was at the Last Supper with his disciples there at an upper room somewhere in Jerusalem. And the last words of Jesus in chapter 14 were, Arise, let us go from here. And so, in chapter 15 began the journey which would ultimately lead them to the Garden of Gethsemane. And as they passed by a vineyard, this prompted Jesus to teach his disciples. And he said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. To say is that the vine is often used as a symbol of the nation Israel in the Old Testament. And now, Jesus takes the symbol of wine and he said, I am the true vine. And if Jesus is the vine, we can understand that the church, the body of Christ, is the vineyard of God. God is giving to the church the privilege to bring forth fruit unto him. You see, you live to bear fruit for God. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Father is the one who is overseeing the vineyard directly. God takes care of everything to the soil, the water, the sun, so that you, the whole church, can bear fruit. And Jesus goes on. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. This famous teaching of Jesus inspired many commentators to different commentaries. To understand this teaching of Jesus, it is important to realize that Jesus is talking to his 11 disciples. Judas is already gone to betray Jesus during the supper. This teaching is addressed to his disciples. Jesus is talking to his disciples and not to the multitude. Jesus said to them, that he is the vine, the disciple is the branch, and God is the vine dresser. God takes away every branch that does not bear fruit. Now pay attention. The ancient Greek verb arrow is translated here as takes away. Yet if we translate arrow more accurately, then it means lifts up. The idea is that the father lifts up unproductive branches of the ground, that they may get more sun, so that they also can bear fruit. In that culture, everyone knows how the vine dresser takes care of the branches, which are lying on the stony, dusty ground. He lifts up unproductive branches, and this was common in vine dressing at this particular time. Jesus doesn't give his disciples a negative message like for example, God is going to cut off what doesn't bring fruit. Well, this would hurt us, but our Father does not hurt us if we don't bear fruit. And by the way, there is nothing mentioned about cut off. Notice, Jesus doesn't speak of wine cultivation here, but about how the wine dresser takes care of the wine, how God is taking care of his people. Jesus is giving to his disciples a positive message. 
When he speaks about taking away, this means that God lifts up a branch to a better place or position. In other words, God is going to take believers to a better place or position where they receive more light, more sun to bear fruit. Think about Jesus is in his last hours and right on the way to the cross. And the disciples are pretty sad and confused because he said to them that he will go away. Imagine they left all behind to follow him. They were daily together with him for about three years. And they knew that he is the Messiah, the Son of God. As Jesus told them that he is going away, they were shocked, sad and confused. And therefore he encouraged them with the message of the vine, the branch and the vine dresser. Jesus said also, every branch that bears fruit he prunes, or in other words he cleanses. In Israel, in the time of Jesus, did the vine grow across the ground. This was their traditional way of vine growing. The vine was just lying across the ground and propped up on one end by a rock. That is why the fruit was lying on the stony and dusty ground. When the fruit was getting ripe, then the vine dresser went through the vineyard and picked up these great bunches of grapes. He washed it to clean off the dirt and put it in the right position, so that the fruit can grow and ripe to perfection by receiving the full sun. Jesus took an example that was familiar to the people there. Everyone had seen and knows how the vine dresser takes the branch and wash these bunches of grapes so that they might produce more fruit. You see, Jesus is not talking about vine cultivation, but about how the vine dresser takes care of the vine. God lifts up. If you are a branch which brings no fruit, then the Father takes you to a better place with more light so that you may bring forth much fruit. God cleanses. If your fruit gets filthy by the dirt of the world, then the Father cleanses you so that you may receive full light and ripe to perfection. And what is God using to cleanse the disciples, the church? His word. Look at here in verse 3. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. There is this cleansing power of the word of God. Give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have this whole world. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. Jesus is saying here that you need to do something, you need to abide in him. There is this important relationship, the requirement of abiding in him. Abide means stay attached, stay connected, in other words, to be in a close relationship with Jesus. And how can you be in a close relationship with Jesus? How can you abide in Him? By having a prayer life, by hearing and obeying His word, and by having fellowship with those who love Jesus. This is how you can have a close relationship with Jesus. This is how you abide in Him and how you can bear fruit. It is important to give attention Jesus is speaking of bearing fruit and not of producing fruit. Believers don't produce fruit, they bear fruit. You cannot bring forth fruit by yourself. The only thing that you can do is abiding in Jesus and He produces the fruit which you shall bear. And what is the fruit that Jesus is talking about here? Jesus is talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. 
Notice the word fruit is always in singular because it is the spiritual fruit of love that Jesus is talking about. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Jesus is telling us that we shall abide in him and when we do this, then he abides in us. You see, this is a mutable relationship. Jesus made it clear, I am the vine and you are the branches. Jesus is doing everything that you can bear fruit. He gives his life, his love, his grace, his power. He is going to do things in you, through you and for you. All you need to do is to bear his fruit of love. And after all, he is going to reward you, that you allowed him to do things in you, through you and for you. Our God is so generous and he will take care of each detail in your life. It is not so that you bring only some fruit, you will bring forth much fruit. Every piece of fruit has seeds within it, seeds that are meant to reproduce more fruit. Therefore Jesus said, who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. In other words, you will bear much love. Whatever reasonable, charitable, good work or project may someone accomplish, if it is not directed from Jesus, it is worthless works and God will not recognize it. Then Jesus taught, without me you can do nothing. You cannot please God and bring glory unto him, a part of Jesus. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Jesus was addressing his teaching the whole time to his disciples. He said to them, you are the branches. But now here in verse 6, he is addressing his statement to anyone. Because he said, if anyone does not abide in me, will end up in the fire and be burned. And now arises this interesting question. Is it possible that someone confesses Jesus as his Redeemer and Lord and does not abide in him? Well, if this wouldn't be possible, then Jesus would not have mentioned it. There are indeed those who confess Jesus as their Savior, but they don't abide in him. They don't have a close relationship with Jesus. They say, praise the Lord, but they don't follow his will. In the Gospel of Matthew, you will find more information about those who just worship Jesus with their lips. One thing is for sure, if anyone does not abide in Jesus, this person cannot bring the fruit that God desires, even when it is done in Jesus' name. The purpose of every believer in Jesus is to bear the spiritual fruit of love. Give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have this whole world, give me Jesus. you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. What a great promise from Jesus. Whatever you desire and pray for, I will give you. But note, he is addressing this promise only to those who are abiding in him and his word. Under those conditions you can ask God whatever you want and he will give it to you. Because if you abide in Jesus and in his word, you have the desire to follow God's will, to please God and to bring glory unto him. And this is why his disciples received this promise. By this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. You see, the purpose of fruit bearing is to bring glory unto God. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. 
This is the first time that the Gospel mention anything about the joy of Jesus Christ, that my joy may remain in you. I am convinced that Jesus laughed a lot because the fruit of the Spirit is love and the characteristic of love is joy. The joy is a thing of love. Jesus speaks of his joy here, but it is interesting that he speaks of his joy just before he is coming to the cross. The Lord wants your joy to be full and therefore he speaks in his final discourse about his joy which shall be our joy. Jesus kept the commandments of his Father and in that he received joy and now Jesus promises to those who keep his commandment and abide in his love that they also will receive his joy. And what is the commandment of Jesus? This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. You are commanded to love in a particular way like Jesus and what was the love of Jesus like? Greater love has no one done this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Jesus laid down his life for you and me. That's the kind of love that he has for us. This is a self-sacrificing giving love and this is the way how we shall love. Well, you maybe think, oh wow, I cannot give such great love. And you're right, you cannot give such great divine love, but pay attention, not your love is required, it is his love that is in you and comes out of you. Jesus is the vine and you are the branch and the fruit that you bear is his love. You see, it is not about emotional love which is an unstable thing, but it is about spiritual love which is a lasting thing. And you receive this particular spiritual divine love from Jesus for the glory of God, for the blessing of those around you, and as well for your blessing. Give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have this whole world. Give me Jesus. You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you. Well, the relationship with the servant is about obedience and disobedience. The relationship with the friend is about understanding and not understanding. Friends have therefore a close relationship because they understand while servants do not. And the Lord said, I'm calling you friends because he made you understand. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. God chose me is an exciting thing to me. He knows everything about me and he chose me anyway. And this is because of his amazing love and grace. And imagine God chose me before the foundations of the world. But wait a minute, if God has chosen only some, this is not fair to the others and God should be fair, doesn't he? But how can God be fair when he chooses some to be saved and some not? Well, God made his choice based on his foreknowledge, God knowing those who would respond to his love and grace and say yes to Jesus. God knows everything about us and he knows the results of each man's life. And on this basis he chose us. Jesus said also, I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. You see, he has chosen you to bear fruit and furthermore you shall bear even lasting fruit. And we can only bear lasting fruit by abiding in him, by having a close relationship with him, 
This is how our fruit can remain, and if we do this, he promised us, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Now again, Jesus comes back to the prayer and the prayer to the Father in Jesus' name. I believe that prayer should be addressed to the Father in the name of Jesus, because Jesus taught to pray in his name and not in any other name. We received in John chapter 14 this great promise, Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. And in John chapter 15 he promised again, You will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. And now here in verse 16 the same promise. These promises are meant for his disciples, for those who abide in him. And those who abide in him, they know that the prayer is not meant to satisfy their wishes and desires. Like for instance, please God, give me a new house, give me a new car, and give me this and that, and so forth. God is not a genie. Prayer is also not to inform God about situations and circumstances, because God knows everything. He doesn't need to get informed. Prayer is not God's information time. Prayer is also not to present God your solution for your or other people's problems. We should not direct God on just how to work out our problems. Otherwise, you may be disappointed when God does not follow your instructions and expectations. I do not agree with those persons who say that you have to give God a detailed description or he does not know how to answer our prayer. But let me tell you this, God is for sure much wiser than I am. He doesn't need my help. Our prayer is to align with God's will. Prayer is consenting to the will of God so that he may do those things that he wants to do in you, through you and for you. These things I command you, that you love one another. The commandment of Jesus is to love one another. This is the fruit that God is looking for. You know, the only thing you have to do is abiding in Jesus. By having a devoted prayer life, by hearing and obeying his word and by having fellowship with those who love Jesus. And through this close relationship with Jesus Christ will grow the right and good works which will please God. Be blessed and be a blessing with the love of Jesus. Give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have this whole world.